What's up, everybody? Thank you for hanging out with us on this glorious Thursday as we do a little bit of a deep dive in the fall content that is coming out soon. Ladies, are you excited for this? Let's go. I mean, I think like it's I even work with y'all and I think that I underestimate how much work goes in to every single season of content that comes out. So it's almost like that you guys are launching a new child into the world four times a year. <laughs> that you've spent so much time and energy helping to create. That's the great part about this day is it's finally out in the wild for everyone. Yes. <laughs> and it's been Absolutely. four months in the making. So awesome. And thank well, you if you have us. Like there's 150 other people who yeah. work with us. So um, I think everybody should just take days off after this. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, well, if you haven't joined us for an unboxing before, we spend a little bit of time and do a bit of a deep dive, helping y'all understand what are the new components to this season? Um, what are all the different series? What is our team really excited about with every single series? Uh, we're gonna talk graphics, you're all, all the different things. Um, so we're super excited about it. If we haven't met yet, my name is Brett Talley and I am one of our three orange student specialists. And I also hope our, I, I also host our Rethinking Youth Ministry podcast, which I hope we get to start <laughs> recording new episodes of very quickly. I know that we, I get that question on a regular basis, which makes me feel great um, because people want it back. And so do we. So hopefully that happens soon. Uh, and I'm hanging out today with our executive director of Orange Student Strategy, the one and only Ms. Crystal Chang. Hi! Queen! <laughs> <laughs> and then we have our XB3 high school director, Ms. Leslie Mack. Hello! And, and then the incomparable XP3 yes. Middle School. Yes, yes. Director and czar, <laughs> Ashley Marie Bohens. Let's go. <laughs> there should be like, we should have an applause button in the background that we can, yeah. that we can push for, uh, for each of those. But anyway, if you are new to XP3 and you're kind of watching this because you've just jumped into XP3 World or you're thinking about, okay, maybe we want to jump into XP3 World. So we release content quarterly. So we release 48 weeks of content a year. We release it four different times during the year because we want it to be as relevant as possible. But we also want you to be able to plan. So if you go to orangestudents.com slash plan, you're going to see the full 2021, 2022 school year that we're going to release. But we're specifically talking about the content that is getting released June 1st that is set to be used in the fall, which you can use whenever you want. But it's our <laughs> scope and cycle in the fall. And there is some strategy around why some of these are falling in the fall, falling in the fall, falling in the fall, uh, which we'll talk about when we get there. But since we're talking about fall, ladies, real quick, one of the things that I think this is a bigger deal with the ladies than the guys, but I like my layers too. And so what, <laughs> what, is, the, what is the fall kind of clothing that you're most excited for when that crisp weather hits in the fall? Boots. Oh, boots yes. for days. Yes. That's good. Boots for days. I was, you got it, Ash. Honest. You got it. I was gonna say, I just being honest here, I look better in fall and winter clothing. <laughs> Layers is my friend. Are yes. my friends, whatever. Um, <laughs> but I would say a hooded sweatshirt or like jean jackets. Like okay. you know, down here in Atlanta, you can't really wear anything like that in the summer. So That's, very yeah. excited for that. I feel that my answer is super similar. Like a hoodies, just hoodies, being really casual, throwing just on hoodies. a hoodie when you need to run, run somewhere, just hoodies. Yep. Yeah. And if you I live in a part of the world where you don't have like autumn e weather in <laughs> August, September and October, just know that we don't either. Like we just make it up and go with it. It's going to be 90 degrees here and I'm going to be walking around in boots and a flannel because it just yes. happens. <laughs> And I don't know if you noticed, but um, what I'm wearing is half a hooded sweatshirt see, nice. and a half a jean jacket. Love. So, Represent representing the fall on a, what will be a 88 degree day in May here in Georgia. <laughs> Love it. 
Uh, awesome. So as we before we jump into the actual series, I, I'd love for you guys to talk about what is what is new or what's different mm -hmm. for this fall season of XP3 and 2021. I know we've made some tweaks to things and there are just some flat out brand new things that I'm super excited about. So who wants to get us started with what's new? I want to go. I want to go. All right. So um, if you are in the US, fall is usually the beginning of our school year. And if you're not like, sorry, um, feel free to call it season one and not call it fall. Um, but here we call it fall, it's the beginning of our school year. And around this time every year, we launch the content plan for the whole year. And you heard uh, Brett talk about that. It's at orangestudents.com slash plan. We call it the one year scope. But essentially we just tell you like, hey, here's where we're going for the whole year. You get every series title, you get the bottom lines, you get um, memory verses, you get scriptures. It's basically everything you need to plan your whole year, but the content comes out a little closer to the time that you're gonna use it so that it feels a little more fresh and a little more relevant. So that one year plan is up now and there are some new pieces of it that I am just like, just dreamy, excited about. Um, the most important piece of it is for the very first time, we have what we call an annual focus, meaning there's a message that is gonna show up in every week, all year long, and it's such a simple message. It is when you understand who Jesus is really, it changes everything. And it will be worded differently for middle and high school, but the core message is, hey, when you understand who Jesus is, it's going to change the way you see your friends. When you understand who Jesus is, it's going to change the way you see serving. It's going to change the way you see prayer. It's going to change the way you see Christmas. It's going to change the way you see forgiveness. It's going to change the way you see just about everything. And we want teenagers to connect to this idea of Jesus isn't just a Sunday thing. Jesus isn't just a story. Jesus can change every part of my whole life. So that's the annual theme. And for the very first time, we have series bottom lines. Now, if you've been around with us for a little while, you know that we do weekly bottom lines because we want students to be able to walk out of the room and remember what was taught. But we know that every kid is not there every week. We know, in fact, statistically, most kids are there half the time. And so we wanted to build in a series bottom line or a message that gets repeated every week during the series so that a kid can begin to connect the dots even if they miss a week. So you will see that series bottom line appear on that one year scope. You will see it appear in graphics. You will see it appear on slides so that you can use it in your teaching time. It's also a great way to communicate with parents what we're talking about for the year. So those are just a few of the things that we are just beyond excited about for our next one year scope. I love it. And and anytime that I talk about the, you know, orangestudents.com slash plan, the one year scope, everything, I have to also talk about our plan your year resource, yes. which you absolutely have to check out. We'll drop that in into the chat. Um, it's it, as as you're thinking about the one year scope and you're looking at all those things, it is an unbelievable, helpful resource uh, to be able to walk through too. All right. What else is new? Um, I'll jump in. Something I've been excited about for a few months now is our upgraded devotional strategy, which we call Everyday Faith. Um, it's a faith that goes with everybody, everywhere, into everything. Um, and it has several different components to it. So if this is your first time hearing about it, or maybe you've heard about it before, but you still are trying to put the pieces together, let me just give you a quick overview of it. The first is um, our daily devotionals, which are part of the, your curriculum package if you're a subscriber. Uh, and what we did was we actually have middle and high school and college students writing with us. So on day six of yeah. every week of our devotionals, you'll find a student writer from somewhere in the world, um, not even just in the United States. States, but we have writers in Australia, we have writers in other countries, and it's really fun to read um, truth through their eyes and through their perspective, and hopefully will help students um, be able to put themselves in somebody else's shoes. So that's one part of our everyday faith strategy is, is their individual time with God. The other part is something that we call the Faith Skills Experience Kit. And so basically what the Faith Skills Experience Kit is, it's a devotional experience. We know that we grow in our faith when we have our alone time with God and we focus on our, that relationship, but we also grow in our faith 
with other people, which is why we gather on the weekends or why we gather on Wednesday or Friday nights. And um, this is just an additional time to gather, but an additional time where it's not another lesson. It's another chance to apply the truths that you just learned. So it aligns with our curriculum, but it can stand alone if you choose to use a different curriculum or you write your own. And basically it just takes you through the four faith skills, hear, live, talk, and pray. And so how do we dive further into scripture. When we talk about authority, for example, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, we talk about Jesus is a great example of authority. What does it look like to look at, um, you know, the way that Jesus interacted with people in this specific narrative or whatever in the gospel and find out more about the authority and then have a conversation with people about it. Um, and what does it look like to, you know, act on the things that we're saying that we, we are challenging students to do in our series. And so there's a lot more to it than that. But I would say if you have not checked out the Faith Skills Experience Kit, please do that. There's a, a sample. You can see some of the student sheets. If you have two gatherings a week, maybe you do Sunday school and Wednesday night. This is a perfect strategy. It used to be called the expansion pack, but we kind of upgraded and got more strategic in how we're creating it. Um, and so anyways, I'm very excited about the everyday face strategy. So if anybody else wants to add to it, you can. I do. Ash, can I just tell you, I don't, I don't think you and I have talked about this yet. So like, sorry, everybody else is in our private conversation now, but I had this conversation with a bomb youth pastor this past week. Her name is Jordan. Jordan is like a professional energizer bunny. I, I cannot understand how she does as many things as she does in her community. And she's sharing with me that she has four mandatory meeting times with her students each week. Like not mandatory for the kids, but like her church says, like you're going to meet on Wednesday nights for youth worship. You're going to meet on Sunday nights for small group. You're going to meet on Sunday mornings for Sunday school. And you're going to do a prayer breakfast in the middle of the week. And we were talking about how much time it takes to create content for all of those four gatherings. And I was sharing with her exactly what you were just saying. The faith skills experience kit would work for Sunday morning. It would work for you know your Tuesday morning prayer breakfast or whatever it is. And, um, and just how simple you guys have made it so that any leader can jump in and lead four really simple activities with kids to get them practicing their faith. And she was like, yeah, that is exactly what needs to happen because I am writing till my fingers are falling off wow. trying Crazy. to prepare for all these gatherings. So um, that's Jordan, if you're listening, we're going to send those to you because <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I was going to also incredible. say they're written in a way where they can be student led too. I have, I've been talking with some youth leaders who have been piloting the strategy and they have their high school leadership team leading middle schoolers in this. Mm. Um, and the way they're written, they're so clear and it's just take it again. It's not a lesson. It's just a way to walk out our faith, to practice yeah. our faith um, touch point. So. Love that. So awesome. good. I think, I think I'm up next. I want to jump in with something else new that we're doing this year. Is that good? Now a good yes. time? Also, I want to say, I was not digging in my nose when the camera camera came back, I promise. Literally, <laughs> I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> I don't know. People who have nose rings understand this, where you're like, oh, is my nose right ring here. twisted the wrong way, right? Okay, so I was just twisting my nose ring, y'all. Okay, um, anyway, I want to jump in. Can I start using that excuse, even though I don't have a nose yes, ring? Yes, do it. I do it in traffic all the time, and I'm like, people think that I'm just, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem, y'all. It's a problem. But I'm super excited to jump in and to share a new thing that we were launching this year. And I'm so excited about it. Um, basically, we have created this new piece and it is a bonus piece, right? We love a good bonus. We love a good extra, a good plus. Um, and I want to show you really quickly on my phone. Can you see this artwork? Yeah, perfect. It is. Look. So we created this new added piece of artwork to help your students and your staff get energized and, and experience what the all the things that are going to come up in the upcoming year. Um, and so every series has this bonus piece of added artwork that you don't have to wait until all the series come out for the whole year. You actually have something visual um, to help guide the, the, the whole vision of what a series is going to be. And if, on this version, I see swipe whoops wrong way. This version, it includes the series bottom line that Crystal alluded to earlier. Um, and it's just a way to get really inspired about the topics and themes we're going to be talking about. Um, and so the thought is that you would have this, and right now it's super tiny on my phone, but you could get it printed as big and as large as you would want in order to display in your ministry spaces. And we're super excited about that feature. Again, this is a bonus piece of artwork. You still get the series 
theme art that we've yeah. always, always provided. So we're super excited about that. One other thing, and I just, this is a super tiny thing, but I know when things change, you're kind of like, how, you know, what is this new thing I'm looking at? Um, when you get to your ministry leader guide and some of your other guides, there's always been a preview video. Oh, where am I? There you go. There's always been a preview video, but now it just looks more like a video, a preview video instead of just the series artwork. So look for that in all of your guides. It's a new tiny change, um, but don't let that throw you off. It's always been there, but now it just looks a little bit different. So wait, can you show that show that picture again? That guy yeah, looks really handsome. Who is that? Oh, wrong way. Can you see? Oh, mercy. Wow. Oh. <laughs> what, a, what a must. I can even tell how wonderful that mustache is from that oh. little tiny pixelated picture. <laughs> Glorious. Who is that? <laughs> awesome. I, am, I I love if you if you haven't watched our kind of scope and cycle unboxing uh, that we did a while ago, then you probably need to jump back and take a look at those because it kind of walks through all of those different things. And you can see Crystal's actually in the room uh, where the giant poster of those <laughs> graphics are, which y'all, it's, look at that. That's so cool. Yes. <laughs> you can't it. tell it in this shot, but that thing is four feet by six feet. I'm <laughs> a little excited and it's kind of gigantic. <laughs> um, oh. Okay, can I share some more gigantic upgrades? I'm so excited. Yes. At some point, we're going to talk about the fall content, but like it's the beginning <laughs> of the year, guys. So much new stuff to talk about. So, if you have been with us for a while, you know that XP3 has a media package, right? And for a long time, that has meant teaching videos, which is really awesome if you need a substitute teacher. It's really awesome if you want to bring some diversity into your teaching team and that's not available to you live. You can have different voices teaching. If you want to have um, middle schoolers learning from a live person in one room and high schoolers learning from a video in another room, and that's how you manage that, the teaching videos have been great. But we felt like this was the year that the teaching video package gets an upgrade. So in the media package for this year, um, a few things are happening. So many of you asked for countdown timers, mm -hmm. countdown timers that look like they go with the series. So those are gonna be in your media package this year. Additionally, we've been working on some teaching enhancements so that even if you're teaching live, you can use some of these video enhancements, whether it's a smash cut or a filmed interactive, or it could be a, a graphic, it could be a GIF, but for a number of your lessons in the media package, you're gonna get added in just some media graphic video enhancements to make your live teaching even more engaging. Um, and on top of that, you know from this past year, in the media package, we added a video that pauses. So while the teacher is teaching, they're gonna pause and say, okay, now talk about this with your small group and then small groups can talk a little bit. So it's a teach a little bit, talk a little bit, teach a little bit, yeah. talk a little bit. And that was great for groups that were meeting digitally or groups that were meeting in a socially distant way. We also created a small group guide that goes along with that. And so we just wanted to let you know that that's gonna stay for this year. And that video is still gonna be included in the media package. So it's a whole lot more than just teaching videos this year. Um, and we just, hope that those things are really helpful. And we also want you guys to let us know as you start to see the new elements in the media package, we want you guys to take a look at it and just let us know like, hey, I love this piece. Hey, I wish it was different. Tell your OS so that that can get better and better during the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also all that new stuff, same price. Just just throwing it out there. I was really <laughs> excited about it. I was like, I don't want to charge more for this. Um, so yeah, same price. You just get lots of new fun stuff this year. That's awesome. And and Crystal, I learned something new about you in the midst of that, that you are a soft G GIF person. I wasn't aware. Yeah, I don't know. I go back and forth because like, you know, the Enneagram 9 side comes out and I'm like, I don't know. I can see it either way. Um, but yeah, I think, it, I think it's a GIF, right? I'm a, I'm a hard, I'm a GIF guy. Me too. No. Me too. No. Jif is what I put on on my uh, peanut butter and honey sandwiches. I don't know about that. We, we're we're going to need y'all to jump in the comments here and let us is know. It it's Jif, right? Jif. Uh, because if you say Jif, nobody knows if there's a T on the end and you're just not enunciating. We're not like giving you a gift. It's a Jif. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. True. That is challenging too. All right, what else? What else do we have that's new? 
I would say our just parent queue in general got a glow up. Um, our mm -hmm. parent queue MailChimp and our printable pieces, all of them look a little bit different. Um, and we really got more strategic in the uh, cues that we were giving, which I'm really excited about. And the app specifically got like a yeah. massive glow up. So if you have not yet pushed the parent queue app to your parents, this is the time to do it. Because one of the things you'll see in the app is there are four cues um, per week now in the app, whereas the printable piece in our email, it, the parent queue is four per series. The app is four per week. So it's allowing parents to engage even more on a weekly basis during those strategic times. I think you guys are going to talk about it more with Chris and Ivy coming up soon. Yeah, right? so there's a, there's there's an even bigger app um, kind of update happening. I think the plan is in August and on June 8th, um, I'm going to be hosting Kristen uh, right here in this group, and we're going to be kind of doing a deep dive into into the app and some upgrades and all sorts of fun stuff there. So June 8th, hop back over for that. So cool. I think one last thing or another thing um, would be our new printable printable Devos got an upgrade. So um, mm. you've always been able to have the Devos we create in the version Bible app, but also they have now gotten an upgrade in the printable version. Um, they look a little bit less. I mean, these are my my opinion, a little bit less like homework and more like this is a part of my growing <laughs> faith that I can just use in my everyday life. And so if you're like me and you like things digital, like an app or a Google Doc or whatever, but you also like an analog version because I like to write on things and take notes and collect them. Um, this printable Devo, like mm. it's worth printing out and passing out to your students. So, okay, you know what? Other like just kind of graphic -y upgrade that I was excited about is our credits page looks different. And I think for just about any book or product I use, the credits page is pretty much useless. Like I don't like, what do you do with <laughs> like why do they make those? Um, most of the time I don't care, but when you are a youth worker, I think those things are really important because eventually a senior pastor, a parent, an elder board is going to ask you who is making this stuff? Who are these people? Is it just like, is this some 22 year old fresh out of college in a room by themselves making yeah. all this stuff up? And so the credits page is a really fun uh, visual way to show them the faces of everybody that's involved every season. Um, each curriculum uses more than 75 contributors. Um, who are youth workers, who are counselors, who are teachers, who are artists, who help us in all sorts of ways. And so this is just a, a way to share that with your team so that they know, hey, this isn't just me alone in my office or someone else alone in their office, but there's a whole team of youth workers working yeah. behind me. Awesome. I love it. So I, I'm assuming everyone's going to remember all those things. <laughs> but even if you don't, that's okay. You'll just get a double surprise when you're looking through the content soon and you're like, I oh, forgot about this thing. This is amazing. Uh, but I'm super excited about all that new stuff. Thank you all for your super hard work um, of what it takes to, to add additional things to what we already do with XP3. I'm not quite sure how or when those kind of things happen, but, uh, but I'm super excited. All right. So now we're finally going to dive into the fall content. You guys have a minute on the clock to talk about each series, which is not gonna be easy to do, but you're gonna do your best. best. Ashley, we're gonna start with you. So the first series we have is about change. <sighs> so tell us about the middle school version of this change series. All right, I don't have to convince anybody who's watching that middle schoolers experience a lot of change. Like their bodies are changing, their friendships are changing, they're changing classrooms each time. Like there are so many changes that are happening in the life of middle school, but specifically this year at a pandemic on top of it, this back to school may be the first normal start to school in a really long time, like halfway mm. through middle school already. And this might be the first, hopefully, the first time they feel normal in a long time or they're experiencing more change than normal. Maybe their family changed. Maybe the, the money situation in their family has changed. And what I love um, starting kind of graphically off the illustrated scope that um, Leslie talked about here is that you can be confident when everything changes is the bottom line for our series. And then um, our actual series into the unknown, which totally is uh, a nod to frozen, of course, but we went with the astronaut and space theme because hello, that's fun. And you'll see that kind of woven in our interactives and in our bumper and in our teaching videos everywhere. You're going to see this, but not only that graphic you get, but you also get one 
with the series bottom line. You can be confident when everything changes, which is great because when a parent just sees that, they're like, ah, I don't know if I'll bring my kid to church. But then when your parent sees this, they have a little bit more idea of what the series is going to be about. So maybe they'll make sure they're, oh gosh, oh gosh, I'm talking too much. Didn't even get to the most exciting parts. So I'm gonna let Leslie well, do that. It's worth it, go. Okay, I'm sorry. But what I'm really <laughs> excited about for this series is for the first time, we have created a 52 page journal for our students. And it's got our devotionals in it. It's got our XPs, our experience pieces. So um, ways they can process change. It's got questions, it's got summaries. In this 52 page journal, which is currently available for pre-order, um, but won't ship <laughs> nice. till the middle of June. Uh, even though it's it goes along with the series, um, it can stand alone. And what I love about it is all of the truth that we're going to visit in this series about change, they can take with them into the future, into any change they walk through. They can flip back through that journal and reprocess each change. Um, and looking at research, that's the most important thing when somebody goes yeah. through a lot of change is that they have somewhere to process it, somewhere to write down their thoughts and figure out how they're feeling about it in order to grow from that change. That's awesome. And okay. did, did my ears not deceive me? Did you not sing at any point during that? I, I didn't have time, but my okay. spirit was singing. Like I'm so I'm kind of proud of your discipline of I not, mean, of not singing in the midst of that. Other time in other series, just to keep talking about this series, like there is no series that's more phase appropriate for middle school than this one. <laughs> I'm like so excited for it. All right, what's that look like in high school? Oh man. Okay. So in high school, we are also doing a series on change. And for high school, the bottom line for the whole series, it says that everything changes, but some things never change. And the series artwork looks like this because ours is called, oh, even if, there we go. And so we've got this TV in a warehouse and we're kind of exploring these ideas of change isn't necessarily all good or all bad and or all complicated there's all kinds of change and so what i'm really really excited about and this is a little bit on the nerdy more adult side for us but we know that when we face change it can really like knock us off our game and so i'm excited that we're equipping teenagers um, to start processing change even before they're facing some of the bigger life changes, even as they're facing life changes. Um, because I think what it exposes for a lot of us is where we begin to stop trusting God, right? When you face change. And so for them to start doing some of that work now makes me really excited um, because change can make you feel tricked by God. It can, it's kind of the start of where you start asking God, are you trustworthy, right? And so I'm super excited that they will be um, processing these conversations with trusted adults. Another thing I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna run over time, but another thing I just wanna mention really quick for uh, our high schools, we've provided again, the feelings wheel has been such a huge tool for us to start Absolutely. talking about things like change, right? Um, again, well, how do you feel about good change? We don't ever really talk about it. We, all, we always kind of lean towards change is negative. I hate it, I wanna avoid it, but let's look at the whole spectrum of how change can play in our lives and, and name those feelings and really start to process and unpack those. So uh, can I say one more thing, Brett? Wait, I can't yeah. see the time. Please, you one got like more 30 thing. seconds to match Ash. Oh, good. So good. Oh, oh, perfect. Thanks, Ash. Um, so we worked really hard to help our students build a plan for change, right? So part of that is the change journal, that you can do that at any point in your life, even if you're not experiencing change, and it sets you up to face change in the future. But another thing is in our faith skills experience kit. Um, if you look through there, there's a place where we're asking our students to go ahead and craft the two sentence or one sentence mantra that you're going to use when it comes to change. We're kind of asking them to lean into change since it's so unavoidable. And so being prepared with even just a way to say, like, if I see change coming, here's going to be my response. Right. And it leans you into trusting God through change. So I just want to say the last thing. That's all I got on change. Awesome. All right, I, I think that you I think you beat Ashley. So your reward is that you get to kick off the next series. So Let's talk go. to us. Talk to us about money. Absolutely. Okay. So for us in high school, we're doing an I have questions. It's a one week standalone talk. And the question is, why is money so complicated? Uh, right. So your series artwork will look like this uh, search bar with the question, why is money mm, so cool. complicated? And we're asking the question, is wanting bad? Is wanting more things, is wanting more money, is it bad, right? And, and ultimately we know that no, like wanting is not bad, but it's when you want money to do things um, 
the more meaningful things in life for you. Like if you want money to answer those questions, it's never going to answer your question of acceptance, significance, purpose, all of these big things. And so we're using this phrase that, you know what, you can own money or money can own you, right? It's this idea that money matters, but your attitude about it matters even more. Again, I'm going to throw out just another shout out to our Faith Skills Experience Kit. We have an activity in there that I think would be so fun, um, but you basically get to create a silent auction, give every student a certain amount of money to spend in the silent auction, and then you get to process the feelings as they see things get bought out from under them or they outbid <laughs> someone else. Uh, I think it's hilarious, especially as, if you tweak and customize some of the things you put in your silent auction to be things that your students um, are into, depending on where you are in the country, all that. So I think that's just a really fun piece that's in our Face Skills Experience Kit for that series. Um, there's also a tool, the Face Skills Experience Kit, not to give it all away, but there's also a tool in there to help them process, this is what I want and this is why I want it, and to help mm -hmm. them find that gap between are they thinking about money um, as something that's going to answer every life problem, um, which we know you need money, but also what are you expecting money to do for you? So all that on our series on money. Super excited about it. So all good. right. Minute 45, Ash. All right. Ooh. What do you got? Our standalone um, collection in middle school is called Trending, um, which is this is the new look and feel for middle school trending yeah, for this that. year, which I'm really excited about. Um, and money isn't necessarily a topic we talk about a ton in middle school um, because middle schoolers don't necessarily have, not a lot of them have jobs yet. Um, but also, when you look at some research, it's like they kind of have a lot of spending power because they do have money. Um, and so we want to start these conversations early. And like Leslie was saying, it's really about our attitude about money. How do we become good stewards of what we do have? Because money isn't bad. And that was something that was really tricky when writing this is we don't want middle schoolers to think it's bad to want money, especially if they want money so that their family can eat three meals a day. Like it's not a bad thing. So there's actually a really sensitive piece to this conversation. Um, but how do we start investing in eternal things? And sometimes you need money to start investing in eternal things as well. And so we don't want them to think money's bad. We just want them to know and, and talk about how do we be good stewards of this money and what are we putting our hope in when it comes to money? And one thing that I really love about the media package um, is we included a smash cut of our communicators. So there's like six or seven communicators and we asked everybody and we have amazing like diversity in eth ethnic diversity and their answers and like how they would spend their money. It's amazing. But we asked like, what would you do with a million dollars? How fun would it be if I'm teaching? And I'm like, I asked my friends what they would do with a million dollars. Check out what they said and you throw it to the screen and it's six different people saying what they would do with a million dollars. And then you turn it to the live crowd. Like, what would you guys do? Turn to your partner yeah. or turn to the person next to you and tell them you have 30 seconds. Go. Like, it's just a fun way to make it more interactive with a live crowd. I love that. That's awesome. You you did not beat Leslie. So Leslie is winning, <laughs> I think, two to nothing so far. Yes, actually. let's go. Give you a chance to redeem yourself. But this is going to be a tough one to go first with because I am I am super excited about this next series. And I know y'all are super excited about this next series, too. So Ashley, kick us off. I'm going to allot you guys a little bit more time with this one if you need it, because there's a lot to talk about with this. So talk to me about this question series. Mm, the big questions, which is actually called the big questions in both middle school and high school. Uh, we are partnering with the Fuller Youth Institute on this specific series. They did this incredible research project and are coming out with this book or it's available, I think, for pre-order right now or and anyways, it's called the three big questions that every teenage that that change every teenager. That's what mm. it's called, right? Sure. Sorry. <laughs> like the, it's, I got confused with the title of our series and the title of the book. Our it's series so is called the big questions. The book is called the three big questions that change every yes. teenager. <clears throat> and the whole series is about identity, belonging, and purpose, which is hello, not just what middle school and high school right. students deal with. It's what we as adults revisit every <laughs> season of our life. It's like identity, belonging, and purpose, every career change, every family change, every everything. And so um, I'm really excited about it. And I love we have a, in our media package, we actually have a video of a, a sixth grade boy named Asael who does like the whole interactive is about planting seeds and watering it and gardening, mm -hmm. watching it grow. Um, and he does the whole demonstration for us, which I love, including middle schoolers in our media package. So, um, yeah, I'll throw it to Leslie to kind of jump into some of the content. 
Yeah, for sure. So uh, for high school, same thing. Our biggest questions deserve better answers. We have the same bottom line across middle school and high school. Um, and so I'm going to give you guys some homework. Everyone watching this, the homework is to go to Google and ask the question, are blueberries good for you? Look at some of the answers and then go to Google, go back, refresh, and then ask the question, are blueberries bad for you? Okay. Because this is what oh, we no. know. When we seek I out love answers. I'm super concerned right now. Yeah, you should, you should be. You should be. All I'm saying is there might be some inconsistency. You can kind of find I thought they were supposed want. to be like a superfood. Yeah. You'll find plenty of articles that say like it's not the superfood you thought. Like it's yeah, it's so devious, just blueberries. But that, that's the thing is when you go to Google or just search bars for, for answers to life's biggest questions, we know there are better answers, trusted answers, um, mm -hmm. proven answers out there uh, when we look to, to the truth. And so um, for me, it's just like, yeah, helping, helping our students know where to turn to with some of life's biggest questions. And so we're asking about, you know, who am I? Where do I fit in? You know, what difference can I make in the world? Um, mm -hmm. That's probably the question I'm super passionate about for students is just like, our answer to that is you can be a part of what God is doing to make the world better. Um, just, there's so much hope in that and there's so much get active and go do it. So I'm super excited about that. Um, for high school, one thing I'm excited for is in our faith schools experience kit yet again, I know I'm really pumped about all the things that are in there, um, but we included something called a life map where we are asking students to think about all the areas that your life is taking place. And when you show up to those places, how are you answering these three questions? You know, like when you're at home or after school or in this activity or on the weekend or at this parent's house versus this parent's house, like all of these different spaces where your life is taking place. Um, we're building week after week and asking them different questions about when you show up, um, how did how do these areas I affect your identity, your belonging, your purpose, and how you think about that. So I'm super excited about that. I love it. And, and a little bit ago, we talked about how, yeah, you can use these series whenever you want, but there is a strategy to when we do a lot of these series. And I think that this conversation about change and this conversation about questions is fall is such a good and important season to be able to lead students in these conversations. So I think that a lot of people are going to find that that really fits in the in the rhythm of what they're trying to do in the fall. Whether your fall season starts at the beginning of August, like it does down here in, in Georgia, and I know back home in Indiana, schools start really early. But I know my friends up in the Northeast, up in Wisconsin, a lot of times they don't start until September. And so obviously you'll want to adjust as needed. But man, these are some great conversations to be happening at the beginning of the school year, the beginning, beginning of a new rhythm with students. Awesome. So good. All right. Anything else with that series? All right. It's awesome. So we're going to, we're going to jump. I'm super excited about it. We're going to jump into this last one about authority. Leslie, get us started off with this yeah. one. For sure. Okay. So we have a series in, in high school. Our series on authority has the series bottom line of the way you live your life can turn the world upside down. And we're calling that series for us, the upside down kingdom. Um, and it's this idea that Jesus came and he turned the way up. He turned it upside down the way that people in authority used power. Um, and so here's what we know, right? Teenagers have a lot of opinions about people in leadership, whether that's people in their homes, people in their church, people in politics, people in media, whatever it is, teenagers have more pains and they're becoming more vocal about how they think about people in authority. Um, also, we know that teenagers themselves are gaining more influence, more power, more authority in their own worlds of whether that's they're getting more followers on social media or they're the friend that the rest of their friends go to, to say like, how are we gonna work through whatever this issue that came up in our friend group? Um, or maybe they're just getting a later curfew and just having more autonomy they're, in all these ways they're experiencing what it looks like to have power and authority in their own world. And so um, we're super excited that students are going to get some practice with the skill of in small groups talking about how how you view authority and keeping it a very honoring and honorable conversation, even if you have to talk about hard things um, about how about authority figures in your life. And I, I'm excited for any time they get to practice that skill, because that means we're putting a generation into the world who will be a lot more successful uh, at, at just having those conversations with other people. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and say this because I don't know. We, never, we didn't really talk about this uh, as a team, but I'm just gonna say in certain communities, the conversation about authority and the authorities hits different. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just so glad that so we're different. setting up those conversations. Um, and we're saying like, don't just plug and play this series, but plug, mm -hmm 
personalize and play the series, yeah. right? Oh, like look for those that. places where your students are gonna hear a line about authority and you know how that hits in your community. And so just be okay. ready to unpack it, be ready to have those conversations. So excited that Jesus is the best example of authority and that's what we're pointing students to. I love it. And, and as an orange specialist, I have so many different conversations about you know, getting phase specific with middle school and high school students. And, you know, there are the low hanging fruit things like, you know, a sex series or relationship series. I'll, I'll, I'll stop the timer. They should, they shouldn't count towards yours, Leslie. <laughs> we uh, should time you. We should time you. Yeah, here, I'll start mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> and authority is one of the best examples of why we need to have phase specific conversations as much as possible, not just around sex and relationships, because the way that your sixth and seventh graders understand and relate to authority is so different than your 10th, 11th and 12th graders. And we have to be able to talk about those things differently. So mm -hmm. if you're someone who's not using XP3 middle school and high school and you're just using one or the other and you're all combined, totally get that have been in situations where I've had to do things like that myself, but this is a great series to try to be able to separate them, to be able to get face specific, talk to your OS about what that might look like. All right, Ashley, middle school, uh, authority. Good job, Brett, you got less than a minute. Um, <laughs> all right, so jumping off what Leslie was saying too, um, the middle school series is called In Charge, um, challenge how you think about authority, which I love the play in words there. Um, but middle schoolers for sure are um, desiring more autonomy and somewhere in the journey of middle school, um, they go from uh, letting somebody decide what, what they eat when they go to sleep to um, pushing against that authority and wanting to pick their own bedtime and pick their own friends and who they want to actually hang out with and what apps they want to download. And there becomes this clash of authority specifically with parents in middle school. And we partner with parents as youth leaders and small group mm -hmm. leaders. So we don't want to make the parent the enemy. Mm -hmm. We want to come alongside our middle school students and help them understand it's okay to want to, you know, to have more freedom in those areas, but you still want to honor the authorities in your life. Um, and so I love that we're diving in and looking at, you know, Jesus's example of authority, like he was the ultimate authority. And so how did he treat people and how did he use that yeah. authority? Um, so learning from that. And also, like Leslie was saying, um, there's a difference between obeying authority and honoring authority, because sometimes mm -hmm. our authority figures aren't acting very honorable always. Um, and I don't just mean parents because I'm not trying to make them the enemy because they're not. I'm just saying in general, um, whether it's something they're seeing in the news or on their news feed um, or they're hearing their family talk about um, authority figures, you know, it, it's important to have those conversations with, with middle schoolers because as they move into high school and they gain more authority, whether it's over their younger siblings or if it's the captain on their team or um, a job of any kind, um, they're going to have a chance to to make some decisions with how they're going to lead. And we hope that love is the driving force behind everything that they do in that area. And I would also point everybody, we have really done a glow up to our additional resources document in our in mm -hmm. all of our series. So don't skip that folder when you look at your downloaded folders. It's called additional resources. And we just kind of curate all different like podcasts and blogs and things that would be helpful to help prepare you as the ministry leader, to help partner with parents, to help prepare your small group leaders. And if there's any direct to student resources that you can use as support for this series, especially in the authority series, but all of them, check them all out. Don't miss that piece. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sorry, I just had to go grab a snack. Um, <laughs> Careful. After all this blueberry talk. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm indulging myself here or if we'll I never know. Well, there's no way to know. We'll never know. You're frozen. frozen. <laughs> Taking fresh blueberries and freezing them. Oh my goodness. So good. Unless crunchy. Will you? <laughs> right? Yeah, which apparently, maybe I should just be eating chocolate instead of blueberries. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, you didn't come here for food debates. Um, all right, that's it. So change wait, money. Wait, I have another thing. I have questions, another thing. authority, and crystal. <laughs> I have another thing, Brett. So earlier we were talking about the change series, and I was like, ugh, we can't not talk about this. So I want to go back to it for just a second. I have had so many conversations with youth leaders. Last night, I had the chance to train some small group leaders and we all were having this conversation about how much of the last year 
was digital, how much of it happened on screens and how novel and interesting and loving it feels when someone hands you something physical. Like there's just, it just, it's different now when we have something physical. And that was some of the heart behind creating journals for the change series. But the other side of that is some, I mean, you guys who are listening, you know this, we've had conversations with youth pastors who are like, yeah, my ministry is different. And so is my budget. Like, buying anything for my ministry is really difficult. And so we sat with some youth leaders and said, hey, how can we make this as easy for you and for your church staff and for your budget as possible? And so we were so excited to partner with a printing company that would allow us to do these change journals for $5 each if you buy them individually and $3 if you buy 10 or more. So $3 means it's at least somewhat more affordable. So you can put those in the hands of every kid and it's a way to partner with a parent whose family is going through change. Like, you know, when you hear the family that's moving, like one of my girls in my small group, her family moved across the country her sophomore year, and it was devastating. And I was like, I, I, I have nothing to help. I have nothing to give you. Like, I don't know. And I wish in that moment I'd been able to go, yeah, yeah, I have this journal. I want to process through it with you. Like what a great way to partner with a parent to hand them something to hand their kids. So anyway, we're just like super excited about it. You can find those at orangestore.org. Just search for change journal, or you can search for the titles, even if journal in high school into the unknown journal in middle school, but those are at orangestore.org. Oh, that looks so cool. oh, I love that. I'm trying to find, oh, oh, there it is. There it is. Nice. <laughs> And again, Ashley, kudos to not singing the song when when the, the phrase gets mentioned. I, I know that that can't be an easy thing for you. So maybe you get to sing twice as much at the next unboxing because you, you had such good self-discipline during this one. Let's be honest. Chris, the only Krista reason- might be busy during that one. The only reason I haven't broken out in song is I can't hit those notes. <laughs> that song is difficult to sing. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully you are as excited as we clearly are about this upcoming season. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask them in the Facebook group. Reach out to your Orange Specialist if you're not sure who your Orange Specialist is, orangestudents.org slash OS. That's all you need to do. And you'll figure out if it's me, Charlie, or Candice. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Thank you so much for hanging out. Ladies, thanks for giving us a deep dive into all things coming up. XP3 in the fall of 2021. And we'll see y'all later. Bye.